Hey folks, welcome to the Do It Yourself Dad channel. Today we got a new toy. We got ourselves a larger 3D printer. This is the LK5 Pro from Longer. If you wanna check out all the specs on this thing, I will have a link for it down below for you. This thing has a 300 by 300 by 400 print bed, which gets you about a one foot by one foot by 15 inch print size for those of you in the States. Now, why do I need a printer this big? That reason's behind me. This is gonna be coming up on some future videos and we're restoring this old 1976 city car. It's made out of ABS. This thing can print ABS and I gotta print some body parts for it. Now in the process of getting ready to print big parts for that car, we've been playing around with this thing to get all the settings dialed in and really get used to it before we really start doing some big stuff. And to give you an example of what we've printed, we've printed this little R2D2. It actually holds a camera in there and we were using that camera to watch over the printer. Now the reason we picked up this printer is it's a budget printer for its size. Printers that can print parts that big generally go for two to three hundred dollars more than this printer. But with that price, there are some pros and of course there are some cons. So we're gonna first go over the pros of this printer and then the cons of this printer. And then if you're interested in getting one of these, at the very end, I'm gonna share with you the print settings and some of the tweaks that I've done to get the best performance out of it possible. So going down the pro list first is the construction of this thing. Now it does come disassembled in a box, but it is like 90% assembled and the assembly is pretty easy. If you're gonna be putting one together on your own and you get confused on the paper instructions, if you go on their website, they actually have really good instructions there. But it does have these trusses here that reinforce it. And as your um, print gets taller, sometimes you develop wobble on some printers and that helps prevent it. So that's a definite pro on here. Another big pro of it and something they brag about is the noise. I've got a microphone right here and you might be able to hear it a little bit. Honestly, the loudest thing on this printer is the cooling fans. I really can't hear any of the stepper motors going on on this thing, so you're really only hearing the cooling fans. This thing will print in PLA and ABS and a lot of other plastics. Now, a lot of printers, when you get them, the hot end isn't really adequate for printing ABS. You gotta do some tweaks to it so it can handle the temperature, and this thing's hot end doesn't have any issues. It is set up to run those temperatures so you can run ABS temperatures right out of the box without any tweaking. Now I have had to do some things to get this thing to print well in ABS. Talk about that at the end. Now if you're already familiar with 3D printing, you already know what slicing is. But what slicing is, is it's basically taking your design and turning it into a code that this thing can print from. And one of the nice things about this is there's already codes pre-built in Cura. So if you download Cura, there's already profiles in there for ABS. PLA and a lot of the other plastics for this printer. So there's not a whole lot you have to do. Another neat feature of this thing is the print bed. It is a glass print bed. It's two-sided. On one side of it, the side I'm printing on right now because I'm printing PLA in this particular print, has a lattice structure on it. And that structure has little pores in it. And when the print bed is hot, about 60 degrees Celsius, the PLA sticks to it really well. I have not had to use any tricks, any glue, any tape. It just sticks down on that print bed. When the print bed cools, it releases, so you're not having to fight with it. So if you let the thing cool on its own, when you come over, your print will lift right off. But I haven't had any issues with adhesion using that print bed. Now on the other side of it is flat glass, and that's what I've been using to print with ABS. And I have had to use a couple tricks to print with ABS, but that's pretty typical, and again, We'll talk about those tips a little later on. Now this printer, as is the case with a lot of 3D printers, if your power goes out in mid print, the whole thing shuts down, but it will remember where it left off. Now I've had problems with some of my other printers where it shuts off and when you restart it, maybe prints a layer or maybe can't figure it out. Twice now, I have accidentally shut this thing down. Once I was working on the house and I hit one of the breakers, powered the thing down. And another time I had it hooked into a smart switch and I accidentally turned it off. With that, I powered it right back up and both times it completed the print, no problem. So I have tested that out in real world and it does work, it does come back up to temperature, it does pick up where it left off and I didn't have any issues. So now that we've talked about some of the pros, let's talk about some of the cons that I ran into. And the first con, which was something I fixed, was the print bed. Now when the print bed showed up, it's a single rail going through there and that single rail, it came loose. And I fought with this thing and fought with this thing to get it to level out. And I could not get the print bed to level correctly. I thought it was level and then it would print. I'd have print problems and adhesion problems. And finally, I took a good look at it and realized the print bed wasn't installed correctly. It wasn't tightened down correctly. So here's how I fixed it. Now to fix the print bed issue, what you're gonna wanna do is very carefully tip the entire printer onto its side to expose the bottom of the printer. These are the actual wheels that you're gonna be adjusting. And what you wanna look for is 
free play in these wheels. These wheels should not roll freely. They should have a little bit of tension against the rails. This is what keeps it tight. If they spin freely like that, you need to do a little bit of adjustment work. So when you look on the wheels on either side of the track, one side will have a round post, the other side will have a standoff here that looks kind of like a bolt that you can fit your 10 millimeter wrench over. And you'll notice that each one of them has a dimple on it. And when you start playing around with the adjustments, you want to adjust the outside ones first, meaning this one and this one, and then tighten up the middle one. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to do this outside one right here and get these so they aren't free turning. You don't wanna get them super tight, but you do wanna get it so it's getting positive traction on the track right there. And how you do that is by slipping your 10 millimeter over that and turning it. And if the dimple is facing away from the track, that's actually pulling the wheels tighter in towards the track. So you're gonna do that until the wheels, when you grab them like this, roll the bed and don't freely spin. So we're gonna do the front ones, then we're gonna come and do the back ones, and finally we're gonna tension up those middle ones. And when you get everything tensioned correctly, these little Allen screws here, you're gonna to wanna to crank those down to lock everything in place, and then your bed will be rock solid. Now that loose bed was an issue that I ran into with my printer, but it's not a bad idea to go check every other wheel on it to make sure that everything else is tensioned correctly as well, because if any of these aren't, you're gonna get some wobble in play and it's gonna affect your print. Now another thing I ran into is the ductwork for the cooling fan. It's really not that great. And in PLA, you do need to be running that cooling fan and getting good cooling on your plastic, and it only cools from one side. Now, I've been playing around with a couple different files, and there's actually a couple that are available right now on Thingiverse that I'll link below, and I'm also playing around with one that I designed myself, and I'll have that thing linked down below. Now, when you're printing in ABS, you do want to put an enclosure over this, and I'll show you that in a minute. But one of the issues is that all of the components here are part of the frame of it. So if you put this thing in any sort of an enclosure, the screen and all the components down here are now in that enclosure and they're trapped in that heat. That's the case with a lot of printers, but it really would be nice on something that's geared towards ABS or designed to work with ABS, that that stuff is easily removable. So you can put it outside of your enclosure so you're not baking your electronics. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the tips to get the very best print out of this thing. My first tip is don't print on a junky table like this. If you notice this thing is wobbling, I'm doing this for the video. Normally it's on my workbench and this thing is rock solid. This table tends to jiggle a little bit. So make sure that your surface that you're on is a very solid surface that isn't going to move around a lot. Um, so you don't want to have it on like a plastic table, have it on a hard workbench or something like that. Next are your settings in Cura. Now I'm going to have all my Cura settings down below, but if you go into Cura, they do have profiles for this thing. I have tweaked a couple things. One of the things I tweaked is the initial layer speed. I've slowed that down to 10, and that seems to really give a good adhesion on that first layer. I've also set my uh, Z offset to negative one, and that seems to be the best. I've played around with negative two, and that seems to be a little bit too much sometimes, and zero seems to also have some problems. So negative 0.1 seems to be the best Z offset settings. Other than that, I've pretty much just followed the temperatures on the rolls here of the PLA and ABS, and they've all pretty much been dead on, I haven't had any problems. Now, if you're printing with ABS and you're printing on the glass side of this print bed, the best thing I've found for adhesion is making a slurry. And what it is, is it's acetone and ABS filament. I like to use the natural stuff, so this is not colored. It does come out white, but it's not colored. And that way, if you're using a colored filament, it doesn't really show up on your prints the way if you use like a white or a colored stuff. So you cut it up, put it in there, and you let it dissolve. And I use a mason jar because mason jars seal really well, but they also hold up to acetone no problem. So you want to fill up, I do a mason jar about halfway, and I do a, probably about three feet of filament into that, let it dissolve, and now you've got your fluid. Once it's dissolved, I take that solution and an old paintbrush and I paint it onto the bed. Now you wanna do this when the bed is cool so you can spread it around easily because the acetone does dry pretty quick. Now something that's really, really important with printing ABS is keeping the entire air temperature around your print warm. And I found this thing on Amazon and it fits over the printer pretty much 
perfect. And what I like about this is you can fold it up and store it. Now, when you load a file, the print bed is going to heat up first, and that's going to heat up the air temperature. I also threw in there, it's not necessary, but I threw a little thermometer with a little probe going in so I can monitor the inside temperature of this. This thing alone keeps the air temperature inside this chamber about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which seems to be doing pretty well for my ABS prints. The other nice thing about this is it's under 20 bucks. It folds up really easy and it's under 20 bucks. I got a link for this thing down below. If you are printing an ABS, you really do need to get one of these or you're going to have all sorts of issues with uh, layer sticking and warping of your material. My next tip is when you are leveling your print bed, oops, sorry, tramming, tramming your print bed. I know there's some 3D print folks that are going to come in here and correct me down in the comments, tramming your print bed, which is leveling your print bed. I don't like using paper. Paper is never exact, you have different thicknesses. I like using a feeler gauge, and this is the feeler gauge I've been using, and 0.06 seems to be the magic height, which is pretty low, but this thing seems to like 0.06. So that's what I've been using on all of my prints, both ABS and plastic. Um, if you do need to pick up one of these, you can get them really cheap on Amazon. I'll have a link down below so you can pick one up. Another great pointer is a lot of times when you're doing prints, especially prints as big as this thing can print, they may go on for several days. And the last thing you wanna have happen is have that print fail while you're away from the house, maybe you're at work, and all of a sudden you've wasted a lot of plastic. So I've done two things to combat that. So here's the setup. I've got my wise camera here. I'm using my, my fun little R2D2. Here's the image that it's seeing that I can see remotely from my phone. Now you don't have to use this one. I'm using the wise cam pan in there. Um, these little cube cameras are fine. These are like 20, 25 bucks. I'll have a link for these below. These are the best kind of bang for your buck cameras that I've found that work really well. And then back here, I've got the whole thing plugged into a smart switch that runs through the same Wise app. I'll have a link for those too. And that you can shut the whole printer down from that remotely if you notice something going wrong. So hey, I hope this video helped you out. If you're looking at getting into 3D printers, I do have a link for this thing down in the description below if you wanna check it out for yourself. I've also got links to the other stuff I'm using and I've got all my Cura settings and the tips all down there. And I'll also have some of the Thingiverse print files down there below if you wanna look at those. So if this video helped you out, give it a great big thumbs up, go down below, leave me a comment. Let me know maybe you've got one of these and you've got some more tips and tricks for the other people that are watching this video. We love to hear them. And hit that subscribe button if you wanna check out this car because we're going to be doing a whole bunch of work on that. We're going to be 3D printing parts for it, and that thing's going to be on the road soon. You're not going to want to miss it. Of course, thanks a lot for watching.